Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 73 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the next few tutorials, we're going to have a look at how to perform supervised machine learning. So it's very important for us to understand what features are in machine learning. Until now, in the last couple of tutorials, we looked at k-means and Gaussian mixture model, which means uh, they're unsupervised machine learning techniques. So you just have your data and then let k-means and GMM figure out how to split the data. But now, if you have uh, supervised machine learning, you're trying to classify or do regression, but then you're providing the ground truth information, which means, okay, you have your data and you have the outcome, what it's supposed to be. Is, uh, for example, is this correspond, uh, you know, does this correspond to lung cancer or not a lung cancer? Is this like attributes correspond to breast cancer or not breast cancer? Well, sometimes you work with images, sometimes you work with numbers from a blood test, you get the total bilirubin and other types of measurements and uh, uh, you know that you perform, and then you have a table, right? So all of these values are attributes, or you can call them as features, and the machine learning algorithm is trained on these features to predict the label, or uh, trained on these features, along with the outcome that you tell, to create a model that you can use to predict future data. So let's actually get into uh, what features are, and then uh, uh, in the next tutorial, jump into how to extract some of these features. So like I mentioned, features are attributes associated with your data points. And for supervised, you uh, need these to train an algorithm onto these features so you can predict an outcome. And uh, uh, the features depend on the data itself. Like in image processing, you have an image. With your eyes, you can see that, oh, these things are round, these are star-shaped, these are you know needle-shaped and so on. But how does a computer understand that? For that, you need to extract the features. Maybe you need edge detectors or something to extract the information. So for image processing, you need to extract them but for some of these, uh, the features may be natural while you're collecting the data. And uh, here is a quick example. Again, let's uh, focus only on the training workflow for machine learning. Typically for machine learning, you have the labels, right? Okay, uh, think of it as an image and you say, okay, this is a nuclei and uh, this is a mitochondria and this is a lipid droplet. So you have these labels. And then you have training data, which means a whole bunch of images with all the labels pointing to the right regions. Then you extract uh, features. Extract it means you apply a whole bunch of filters, for example, edge detection or something else, and you extract the features, and then you have a list of all the features, meaning you have a table where you have pixel values. Pixel value is a feature. If it is bright, it's something. If it is dark, it's something else. If it is blue, you know that DAPI, okay, this is nuclei, right? So pixel value itself, will tell you is, is a feature in itself, but in addition to that, pixel value after applying a filter is also part of the feature. So you have a table of all the features at every pixel, and that goes into this machine learning algorithm. In the next couple of tutorials, we'll actually look at random forest and support vector machines, but it's very important for us to understand the features first, okay? And the labels also go in and the machine gets uh, uh, trained, meaning it creates a model that we can use. And once it has a model, you predict on new images. Now you're getting new data. Whether it is images or data, you're getting new data. You extract the same features and you apply the trained model and you do a prediction. That's typically the machine learning workflow, whether you're working with data or images. So uh, if you're working just with a bunch of data where you get uh, some of these attributes or features naturally, like liver disease data, well, uh, the gender is a natural uh, data that you get, right? I mean, when you when you test it on a uh, on a person, you get their age, you get their gender, and then you take the blood and you do, do all these measurements, so you get these. So these features you don't have to generate artificially; they are naturally occurring right there. The age, the gender, the bilirubin content, and so on. Same with this breast cancer data. In this case, apparently, uh, they're looking at uh, some sort of uh, uh, image, and uh, this is the outcome. The diagnosis is malignant or benign, and these are all the attributes or features, the radius, 
the texture, the perimeter, the area of, of whatever the uh, tumor, for example, that they're looking at. So these are all features. So for non-image data, or e, you know, even in this case, it's image data, you have to extract these features, right? And in this case, these are all natural. Now, if you have an actual image, again, I keep going back to the same image that we have used in the last few tutorials. So right there, that's your raw image. You apply one sort of edge detection. This is, uh, which means we're extracting feature. So Sobel filter is a feature extractor. And Gaussian filter that does blurring is a feature extractor because when you blur the image, you get certain information about it, okay? About uh, at each pixel. And uh, whatever this filter is, this gives you another type of information, another type of edge uh, detection filter. And this appears to be some sort of a sharpening filter. So everything is uh, contributing towards providing us information about this image so we can segment it. Okay. Now, when you talk about uh, once once you actually apply this, in fact, uh, uh, look at all of these outputs, and now go back to every pixel and report what the values are at each pixel. So this is my features. This this is the list of all the features. So Roberts 0 0.018, whatever that means. Yeah. So these are all the numbers. And again, as you can see here, the numbers are uh, tenth or one hundredth of a decimal. Here it's 10 and 13 and 10, which means you may have to normalize all of this data before you do your uh, machine learning. But again, that's a side topic, but very important point. OK, so when it comes to deep learning, you probably saw some top type of an architecture like this. <coughs> and uh, these layers down there, deep learning, the name deep comes from the fact that, okay, it is actually going through multiple layers. And these green ones are called fully connected layers or dense layers. Again, let's not get into the deep learning. We'll hopefully get there, uh, you know, in the future tutorials. But if you look at this, uh, the raw image is going into the first layer. And the first layer has 64 filters in this architecture. The next one has 128 filters, 256 filters, 512. And each set of filters extract a given type of information from my input image. So even in the deep learning, it is extracting a whole bunch of uh, features. And if you look at the summary of deep learning, again, don't be intimidated yet. But if you look at this, this is just representing what I showed you earlier. So there is a convolutional layer, convolution, you know what we mean by convolution, multiplying your kernel with the image, right? And the kernel is the filter. So multiplying your filter values with the image values and you get output, which is our features. So here, that is 64, meaning you have 64 filters. And here, 64, here 128 and so on. And if you actually look at these filters, these are, if the kernel size is three, did I include that here? Uh, so if the kernel size is three, that means your filters are three by three, okay? so. How many of these do I have? 64 in the first layer. When you apply that on your input image, your output looks something like this. In this case, the input image was uh, an image of Mona Lisa. And you can see how the first filter gives you that output. The second one, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but there's a faint outline of Mona Lisa there that's blurred and so on. Okay, there is the edges uh, showing up and so on. So in summary, features, are when it comes to image processing, features are the responses that we get after applying digital filters. In general, features are the attributes that we use to train a machine learning algorithm. So we can use them or we can model the features to a specific output. Okay, and in the next few tutorials, we keep using these features. We will actually extract some features and uh, slowly understand what random forest is and support vector machines is. And uh, we will segment a whole bunch of images. So please stay tuned and uh, let's meet again in the next tutorial.